Okay, we're going to have a look at these carbs. They've been leaking, and um, these tubes, there's three of them, which go between here, which is um, the, the fuel tubes. There's where the fuel comes in, and they go in. And they've got these little seals around, which perish, which uh, they have perished. So they don't leak a lot, but if you touch them, particularly the longer one, um, you get fuel coming out. So um, I've taken taken them out. I wasn't going to pay 50 quid for six rubber seals from the Yamaha dealer. So um, I've got some seals that are petrol resistant, like this. Um, and there should be the right size in there. Make sure the petrol and diesel oil resistant. Um, I have got a bit of the special O-ring grease, but I mean you can use anything that's you know it will help get them inside there. Um, but do make sure when you take these off. I, I made a mistake. I used a screwdriver to get these seals off, which means um, you mark these inside, and then they'll never seal once they've got little marks. So if you've got a bit of um, this is 1200 grade wet and dry, you can actually get in there with a bit of plastic, um, a spacer or something that will fit in. You can polish those out, any marks you've got, and then you can re, uh, reseal them, get the seals on there, these little seals, and uh, there we go, that's one, that's two. You probably see with your old seals though that they are they do get like cruddy around the edges where the petrol sat and uh, if you move them apart a bit you can see they've got little cracks in um, so they leak um, the important thing is there's two bolts that run through the carburetor here and here now you can loosen this one off where the tubes are, one, two, three tubes between the four carbs. Take this one right under. Remember that there's a washer, a copper washer that sits between this last one it screws into. Only on that bolt, the back bolt where the, where the tubes are. The, the other bolt, this one, take it out as far as you can without separating the carbs. You don't really want the carbs to come apart. That's all the throttle springs come off and they fly in all directions, which is why I've got these sheets around here, I don't want to lose them in the workshop. Um, so you can probably just about see them down there. There's the th springs, I've put a bit of wire through that one to stop it flying out. Um, and I'm hoping the other two stay in place, because they are a bit of a bugger to get in. You can get them in by putting a piece of wire like this thin wire in the, on, in the spring so you can hold it so you can get it in there and then uh, press it in place with um, a, a, well, a screwdriver but you will need to wedge these butterflies open to do that with a bit of rubber or something you know if you've got a rubber block you can just wedge the, these open then it make it a lot easier um, so yeah don't try not to get them too far apart um, so there we go so um, if you if you push them just slightly apart you'll be able to just get that in there and, uh, and hopefully that'll fix your leaking problem but make sure the seals and underneath are really clean uh, so clean them up as they will leak again and then a bit of the grease or a bit of WD I should think could do it um, on these and then we can we can put, put them in that'll make it easier for them to go in this is actually special grease that somebody gave me that is for this uh, o-ring fitting he's quite a good engineer so he knows what he's doing with seals uh, he makes air rifles so the regulator's got to be really good and the seals have got to be good in them so that's what he uses but I think a bit of any sort of grease or WD will do the job um, so that's it really you know you do have to sort of leave them a little way apart and remember there's three different lengths so 
you can just mark them on them as you take them out you know uh, but do not forget that washer because that, that makes the, the space, that makes the distance that you need to have when you tighten that bolt up. Um, the other thing that might drop out are these, um, you can see them on here. You can't without me moving the carbs I don't think. But there are some rubber, oh, they're down there, I don't know if you can see down there. There are some uh, rubber tubes there. You see them moving. They do, can uh, fall out, so just be careful you don't lose those. Um, so there we go. That might be a, a bit of help to somebody. So yeah, that, that's about it. I mean, there's lots of other things you can do. Uh, the these um, I can't remember whether they're mixture screws or air screws, but they've got a setting to have. So the one, two, three, four on this one, um, it's two oh one. This this R one, they are um, three and one eighths. I think some are two and a half set out. So screw them in gently to their stop, then screw them out three and one eighth, and that should get you about right. Uh, and then, I mean, I've got a cheap pair of gauges here. So these um, these cheap gauges, you can set, you can actually take these covers off, and they've all got screws. One of them was a mile out, and it looked like someone had been using the screw before to try and set it. So you can set them with these screws before you use them. Um, and then you can uh, use them to set set your carbs up properly. Um, but to be quite honest, um, if you um, set the butterflies so you can see them all closing at the same time, that's by adjusting this pair and this pair separately. So with the with the throttle stop or position screw, you can set these butterflies so they open and close with the um, you know when you open the throttle at the same time so the gaps exactly the same when they come to rest and then you can set this set so they come to rest uh, with the throttle screw there and then once you've done the individual pairs with the center one there you can set um, the, the two pairs to come to shut together so by eye actually really works well um, you can get them really well adjusted Obviously, if you put a light at the other end of the uh, Venturi down here, if you put a light down down there, then uh, you can you can see the light coming through. You can see the gap that's going to be uh, under the butterflies. Uh, so that that works really well setting them by eye. Um, if you've not got the gauges, the gauges aren't that expensive, but they don't always come um, with the uh, connections. So you can. I think we come with these connections. We come with a set of various ones uh, which are there. Uh, but it's had two and uh, we've actually got we've actually got these stops in the manifold. Uh, to block off three of the holes for the carb, so um, one of them's got a connection already fitted that goes to a, a, a rubber pipe that goes, it might go to the AIS system, I'm not sure, uh, but you can take that one off and fit it, so you need three, you need to make up, if you've not got them in the set, three of these adapters, so that's only um, a bolt, right, the same size as, obviously this will fit, I think it's 6mm, I'm not sure, um, you can drill that down the middle, um, if you've got a bolt, don't probably bolts now, but um, if you get a, 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 it's like a furniture bolt, if you get two and a half inch roughly, uh, two and a half inch bolt, 
um, then you can set it up in your um, in your vice or in your, if you've got a pillar drill like this it works really well um, pillar drill um, and then a where's the vice there we go then you get a vice like uh, there we go like this that's a mistake <laughs> it came out through the side but you see what I mean if you if you if you drill if you drill the bolt down a fair distance then you can fit two um, these are 10 mil nuts on there lock them together a bit of PTFE uh, tape on there you know plumber's tape to make a good seal then you can screw those into the manifold um, they work well they worked okay so um, that that's the other thing that you can do with them so there we go I'm going to fit these back together again fit all the tubes in and hopefully well what I did last time I left um, I left that on there overnight the carbs are um, I think the actual floats are, are blocking off at that when they're up that way so um, it's only going into the rail that runs across so if you leave that topped up to a place overnight just to see if they are leaking at all um, that worked quite well because it was it had leaked out in the morning um, and when you touch these where the tubes go you can see which one I'm guessing this longest one is the one that's going to be leaking most of the time um, when you when you you know it doesn't look like they're leaking but if you just touch them if they're gonna leak it'll come out onto your finger there um, so hopefully it's going to be well worth doing um, and they'll be sealed up uh, it's only done 13,000 miles this bike so they've been standing for a while but it's um, actually you wouldn't have thought that would you that they'd have gone at 13,000 but they were all cruddy there in, inside so there we go hope that's some help to somebody anyway cheers Okay, the springs are all back in now, uh, which was a bit tricky, but um, this is what I've done just to see what petrol's leaking, if there is any leaking out overnight. Uh, just a tube and a funnel onto here. Um, you might not even need to mark it, just mark where it is. Um, and it, probably if you touch these, you might get a bit of air in these tubes, but We'll see what happens in the morning. You know, if they're okay, then when you put your finger under here and move them, there won't be anything on your finger. You can smell as petrol. Um, hopefully, they're looking pretty good now. But we'll see what happens in the morning. Okay, here we are in the morning. Um, the petrol is up here, and it's run down to there, which. It's still holding there, so um, I think that's pretty good actually, considering like there's four needle valves that are just resting shut on the floats. Um, so I don't think it's coming out of these. You can press them. There's nothing on your finger. There's no smell of petrol, so I'm, I'm guessing they've sealed okay those. Uh, so I think that's a success. Um, what I should say is, um, when you look at your O-rings, you probably can't see with that one, but they are a, a round section. You look that you look at them, and you can get square seals, um, but these are definitely round. So the original ones, if they were, which I suspect they are, are round underneath and should be round on top, which is probably why they were leaking. They're squared off a bit somehow. Don't know how, but they have. I guess with a bit of movement, but obviously the new ones. Are round all the way round. Um, if that in fact is one, no, it's not. There's one that's round all the way round. So, you know, they are normal O rings. They're not something special. Um, just they do have to be petrol proof. So the petrol diesel oil proof ones. Um, I'm not 100% sure which size it was I put in now, but um, I've got a feeling there were tens. I think the. Um, the tube actually measured at nine something, um, but they were—they were sure they were tens, and 
uh, that went in there um, but it, it it was a good fit yeah I mean you can tell if they're a good fit or not yeah, they just come a little bit above you know the surface of the tube um, so that was good the other thing I would say um, I might just add is that while the wire's good <laughs> for holding the springs you know if, if if you don't want them to fly out just poke a bit of wire through a couple of the rings on the spring so you know you've got them just fold it so you've got something that will hold the spring there if in case it flies out um, when you're moving them about um, the best way I found um, I've changed from holding it with the wire to put them back I think the best thing is you probably can't see it but there's a piece of unbreakable thread here which is really strong stuff I can't break it with my hands um, and it's thin so you can you know you can tie a tie a knot on the spring and just leave that hanging so you know if something does happen it does go flying it not it, you're going to find it it's not going to go far it's going to be on that still um so i mean you can't really get them in with that but what you what you can do they're safe when you're trying to put them in um so you can actually get them in i found with your, your fingers you can get them level and just under the under the flap and then you know you can use a screwdriver to just manipulate them underneath the nipple on the on the on the stop um so they just sit they don't look they don't look safe you know they look like they're going to fly out at any moment but i mean obviously they are safe because that's that's the way they're built but um so that, that i think that's that's got them all together now it's got the bolts in tightened up it doesn't seem to leak um i've set the carbs you know like i said to you before if you if you if you sh if you get these set right by eye, I don't. I don't really think both. I've, I've done a set on my phasers, and I've done a set on this now, and put them back on. As long as you do these gaps by eye uh, here at the bottom, you get those two right. Like I said before, and you do that, you know, by adjusting that screw, and then they, they, they you can see when you adjust when you move the the throttle that they're coming down at, at the same time, and the gaps the same. Do the same with those two, um, and then obviously the, the pairs will be slightly different. And then set them up with the centre screw, so that they're, they're, they're you know they're, sh they're all shutting at the same time. Um, it, it is fairly easy to see. You'll, you'll you'll see when you get the hang of it. But these are, I think these are pretty good now. Um, so if you shine a light through from the other side, you know you can usually you can usually see. Um, see the gap. So I don't know whether this one will work. So I'll we'll see if we can do it so with a better end. I mean you can't see a lot through there at the moment. But there is oh, I've got my oh, I've got my papers in there so you're not gonna see them in a minute. Let's go and get them out. There we go. So can we see so you can see the my hands in the way now, but you can see the light coming through there, and you can see probably hopefully when they're shut and when they're not. You know, they, they leave them a little bit open, just a fraction, so you can just see a little bit of light, uh, and then obviously you can uh, adjust them when they're on uh, with the throttle stop. Because you, you might find that the revs are too low for it to run. Just spin it, open, open them up with this. Just open them all up uh, and get it running. And then you can, you know, when it's warmed up, drop it back to what it should be ticking over at. What I can't remember it is, but uh, I think somewhere around 13 or 1500. Um, but you'll see that in your book or someone will say what it is. So there we go. So hopefully that's got these sorted for me and hopefully it's helped you a bit so here we are back on the bike the carbs are sitting on there just tied up with a bit of string to here just to keep them up um, I've decided to take the tubes out for the gauges um, they're these here so you can see them so sort of there there along here and then there's a tube on that one that's already got an adapter on um, let's put the tubes back in here they're a bit tricky 
these. Um, so heat them up in some hot water to get them back on again. Um, so I'm not going to do them balance them with the gauges. I'm going to just leave them because I think they're set right. I'm sure they're they're okay. Um, and then connect it all up and see, see how it goes. Uh, it's obviously easier to get the throttle cables on while it's loose like this. Um, just to, to get them around the bottom and uh, be able to get the nipples in the holders there and these on. So that's the thing to do before you put them back on again. Just rest them on here and then don't forget the choke cable here. And this is a great tool for doing up the connections under the carbs, under here, the allen screws. So if you've got something like this, it makes life so much easier. It's a flexible and a right angle for your electric screwdriver. It makes life easy and it doesn't take forever to wind them up with a allen key. So these under here, makes life easy, yeah, and that's what we want. Right, I put an auxiliary tank on, um, everything's back, so we're just going to try a start up now, let's see if there's enough battery left, a little punch going, going to be a choke on, there we go. with that. Uh, that's just right. Well, I'm pretty pre pleased with that. Um, seems to rev nicely. Ticks over okay. Now I've adjusted the uh, throttle stop adjuster. Um, just got to put it all back together now. I'll need to try it again, don't I?
superb. I like that. Okay, it's all done now. All back together. Let's give it a go. Sounds great.